do the bones of the head move? Now, if you ask most people, including your doctor, the answer will be no. Now, even within my profession, the osteopathic profession, where the idea that the bones of the head can move and be treated uh, originated, there is still a lot of controversy on this topic. And one of my goals and missions is to push the osteopathic profession forward, to challenge people. And so that's what I really want to do with this video. One thing that I have noted is that people feel so strongly about this, this subject that they're not willing to be open to the idea. And anytime anybody gets helped by, the, by any kind of cranial work, whether it's headache relief, neck pain relief, any relief in, of any pains anywhere else in the body, those get chalked up automatically to being placebo. And I'm here to challenge the idea that the bones of the head cannot move. And I want to demonstrate on video with a real life patient cranial bone motion taking place. Uh, and truthfully, I created this video for professionals so don't try this at home if you don't have any training but the purpose is to teach those who are willing to at least be open and test this idea out for themselves a method for feeling movement between the cranial bones now what we're going to use as our baseline model is going to be this a plastic skull so hopefully you have one because indeed if the bones of the skull do fuse then they're going to feel like this and any time you try to, to do any kind of motion uh, along any of these sutures, this is what it's going to feel like. And if you compare the two, you will see that there is a dramatic difference between how much motion there is here, which is none, and how much motion an actual patient has. Okay, so this is going to be your baseline. This is what we're going to use to compare uh, what... If, it, if the skull was in fact fused and had zero motion, this is what it's going to feel like. So this is going to be what you're going to use to compare. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands in the same place, which is going to be uh, on a person. It's going to be behind the ear with the index finger on the front part of the mastoid process, which is right here. And the other finger is going to come back behind it. And we're going to place both our hands in the same way. And then what you're going to try to do is you're going to bring your fingers up in in different directions and you're gonna you're, that's what you're gonna be using to compare and that's what no motion feels like and that is in fact what a fused skull should feel like if there was no possibility for motion so go ahead and give that a try and now let's practice it on a on an actual person to see that there is a difference Okay, so the first exercise that we're going to do is going to involve getting the index and middle fingers on the mastoid processes. So the index finger goes on the anterior portion right behind the ear, and the, the middle finger goes on the posterior aspect, and we're going to put it on both sides. And one place that you really want to put your attention to is on the cheeks. Notice, pay attention to see if, if they are level symmetrical from one side to another oftentimes with with people you'll notice that one cheek uh, is more uh, anterior than the other and so when we do this exercise what we're going to do is we're going to glide our fingers in opposite directions so in the right um, on the right side we'll, we'll glide the mastoid process anteriorly and at the same time we're going to glide the left one posteriorly and then we're going to switch so first, we're going to glide the right mastoid process anteriorly until we get as far as it'll go. There will be an end feel there. And then we'll do the same with the left side. Now notice how the right cheek comes forward, the left cheek comes back as we do this. Now I'm going to let it go and bring it the other way and watch the cheeks as they switch positions. So then the right cheek came back and the left cheek came forward. 
So as, as you're doing that, you're motion testing and bringing the temporal bone forward. And if there isn't motion possible at the skull, then the cheeks should not be able to move uh, as well as you're doing this in the back. Another exercise that you can do is actually use the atlas and glide the atlas also in different directions. And you'll, you'll get a, a similar change with the cheekbones there. And for more advanced practitioners, you can assess neck motion and upper back motion. And if you do feel a restriction there uh, on with one side or another in terms of which in the way that they're able to glide, if you can release that and get that moving, you'll often find increased movement in the cervical spine as well. Again, we're going to use this as our comparison. So where we're going to place our hands is we're going to put our fingers on the frontal bone or our hands on the frontal bone. And then what we're going to do is put our hands on along the bridge of the nose and we're going to glide, try to glide side to side. And in fact, when there's no motion, this is what it feels like and nothing happens. Uh, on, a, on a live person, you'll notice there is a bit more glide there as you do this. Okay, another way we're going to assess movement here at the cranial bones is we're going to fixate the frontal bone. So we're going to use a pincher grasp. It doesn't mean we're going to pinch the frontal bone, but we're just going to hold it in place. And then we're going to, with our other hand, uh, get a hold of the bridge of the nose. And then we're going to glide the bridge side to side. And you'll notice it'll glide better in one direction than the other, and then it'll often get stuck in another direction. But you'll get some glide back and forth, and make sure you try these out on multiple people so that you can see that there are, uh, there are a lot of differences between, between patients in terms of how much or how little motion there is.